Hi, I'm Don. Welcome to my channel. I'm an affiliate painter for Red Grass Games and also the head mecha and sci-fi painter for Vallejo Colors. I write painting articles for Fine Scale Modeler Magazine. I also write articles for Fantasy Figures International Magazine. Lastly, if you're into Gunpla, do use my discount code for usagundamstore.com. Links down below. Today, we weather this mecha with Vallejo acrylic paints, no oils and enamels, and turn it into this. We start with the classic model wash brown. You could also use model wash dark brown. So basically, I limited the colors I used here in this video so that it will make the video more instructive. I'm applying the model wash mostly at the bottom part of all the armor parts so this will give like a modulation effect a very subtle one at that because the model wash is very transparent so I'm not I do not use model wash as often because I'm a hasty painter and I like my inks <laughs> yes I'm a hasty painter I like results really fast thus I really like my inks so inks are transparent paints too, similar to the washes, but they stain a lot. They're, they're great for filtering. You saw in the video I added a bit of flow improver to retard the paint because retarded paint, I mean, it slows down the drying time so that you could manage the watermarks better. I also used animals and oils way, way back, like more than a decade ago, but I do not recommend animals for Gunpla. Do ask other painters about it or other modelers about it. Oils are good but I don't do them or use them anymore. You could see in the video I'm simultaneously using the sepia ink and the black ink and sometimes I mix them so that I create variations with the color tones on the model. It's it's like it's kind of like it gives a more more depth to your model because you're playing with two colors. As I've said, I kind of limited the paint selection here to make the video instructive, but you could also use dark green or black green ink and then mix it with sepia, you'll come up with like an olive green ink. It's nice to like use the black green, the sepia and the black ink simultaneously. Also, you'll notice I'm using a lot of the inks here. It is my go-to like weathering in the initial phase of the weathering because it, it gives like it pop makes the details pop and then I kind of create modulation by putting more inks at the bottom parts of the armor. Also, make sure to let each coat dry, each pass of washes dry because if you don't, you're just rubbing away all those initial passes of inks and washes. Now you let those previous inks dry and then now we mix black ink and sepia creating like a, an agrax wash of sorts and then painting around the crevices of the armor parts making all those details pop. I'll be honest here when I'm lazy ink washes will be enough to make the mecha look weathered. So at this point, it's a matter of building up layers and layers of ink washes, more black ink around the gray metallic paints, and more sepia ink over the orange armor parts. Also, I put more, as I've said earlier, I put more at the bottom parts of the armor, creating like a modulation effect or a lighting effect for all the armor parts. Now we use engine grime. Engine grime is like grime buildup on engine parts or mechanical parts. It's like an olive color sort of paint. It's semi-transparent. It's more opaque than inks and it build up it builds up into a like opaque effect once dry. This weathering effects paints were formulated and designed not formulated but designed by fellow Vallejo painter and our head painter for tanks and armory Chema Cabrero so needless to say these weathering paints are awesome paints designed by my bro Chema Cabrero a true fine scale modeler now you see in the video the subtle 
and not so subtle effects of the engine grime it looks like opaque muddy effect sort of thing over the armor parts it's basically oil and grime combined now we use streaking grime and rain marks other than streaking which is like doing streaking with with the brush these paints are awesome for stippling i stipple the streaking grime around the bottom part edges of the armor and then you could stipple the rain marks on the top areas of the model both these weathering paints are semi-transparent so they kind of overlap over the previous layers that we added and they're not like covering those previous layers so they're giving the model or the weathering more depth and of course you could thin this paint so that you have more subtle effects but again i'm a hasty painter i want results really fast so but sometimes i thin them as you could see here especially the rain mark so that i have like very subtle fading rain mark effects now we have the mecha trifecta weathering paints the light rust the dark rust and the rust texture we won't use the washes we're just going to use the rust texture we're not using the dark rust wash and the light rust wash because they're roughly the same color as the armor parts which is orange the dark rust wash is a bit more red and the light rust wash is more yellowish but you won't really see it if we apply it on the armor parts because yeah, both are kind of orange in color as you can see in the video the rust texture you could use it as a thin semi wash paint or you could paint it straight from the bottle and have a really nice texture the shield we're building up rust around the edges bottom part of the shield and it's looking good right now now here is an afterthought i find the orange armor some areas too bare so we're using dark sea blue and add shipping i guess this will be the former or the previous paint which is the police like police mecha paint which is dark blue and then we're applying it via the sponge technique and then applying it via brush so we're just adding like nuances to the armor because it's too orange as of now later you will see i will add more chipping but with aluminum or white aluminum so that it will look like our previous chipping in the other video also here this is also an afterthought i find the blue armor part too like too bare too flat so we're doing glazing with paint i thinned it like with one is to one with water and then using the transparent blue i'm glazing around the edges of the armor just to give it more modulation because it's too flat Personally, I feel that weathering is best or it looks best if, if the painting underneath has shading because the shading will complement the weathering and the weathering will complement the shading. We could actually stop at this point and this will look good even in photos and stuff like that. But the story of this mecha is that it was stolen by gangsters and punks and those punks don't know how to maintain a mecha. Now we kind of improved the basing using, using, <laughs> using Russian thick mud. I also added thinner to make the texture paint more thin. So we're just applying it all over the base and then later we'll add a bit of still water to make it look more realistic. I let this texture paint dry overnight. Now we just add some bling bling effects with the shifter paints. Also, we're going to use the white aluminum metal color for chipping later. Now we're just glazing over the metallic parts with the shifter paints. Where I did not thin the shifter paints, maybe just use like a wet brush and then glaze them over the metallic paints. It's kind of giving the metallic areas more depth and also it gives like a heated look to all those nozzle pieces now we apply chipping effects with white aluminum from metal color range it will complement our old chipping with that we did in the previous video and also it will blend everything together because it will represent fresh scratches 
Now we're using glossy weathering effects paints. The petrol spills and the oil stains are both glossy, so you should be happy with the matte weathering effects that we did previously before you apply this because these are really, really glossy paints. Apply in thin passes or thick passes, but make sure to let dry in between coats so that you build up nicely over the previous layers. Now it's tip time. This tip time is making my videos longer but I hope you like them. Use synthetic or cheap brushes for weathering. The model washes are great for initial washes. Then if you want more like contrast and more depth to your washes, you could use the game inks. The trifecta of rust texture, dark rust, and light rust are perfect for most weathering projects. But we unfortunately, we cannot use all of them because we're painting over orange armor. The inks and washes are very matte when dry. You can complement them with the glossy weathering effects paints if you're happy with the matte weathering already. Now, petrol spills is like the glossy equivalent of game ink black or black wash. It's very black and although it's transparent, it's very glossy and it's nice as a finishing touch over like areas that you want more definition. Now to finish off this project, we're just adding steel water over the Russian mud to give it a more realistic look. Spread the steel water less than 3 millimeters thick and then let it cure for 24 hours. We are done. This is my article for Fine Skill Modeler Magazine, January 2022 issue. Now I'll let you enjoy the finished model and without my funny voice. That's it, we're done. I hope you liked the video. Do like, comment, subscribe, and consider joining the channel so that you'll be part of our Discord community. Saludos! I am done. Welcome to my channel.